Hello, Internet. I'm Evan Dushevsky, Features Editor with PCMag.com. Welcome to the convo. Okay, so today we're going to talk about technology behind bars. Now, technology, say like tablets connected to the Internet, can be a great thing. It could be a virtual aid for inmates, and it could also help inmates maintain uh, family bonds. So this is all a great thing, right? Uh, now, if you consider that most inmates are going to get out of prison at some point and be back walking amongst you know, the public, this is something in, that's in the public interest to facilitate, right? Now, that's something we definitely would want to consider, but at the same time, there's a need to protect the public from the criminal elements that do exist behind bars. So, how do we balance that all out? Now, to help us sort through this, we're happy to be joined today by Chris Grew, the founder and CEO of American Prison Data Systems, or APDS. Um, APDS is a for-profit public benefits corporation that aims to provide Android tablets and other things that we'll talk about with internet, uh, with internet connections to uh, currently serving inmates. Chris, thank you and welcome to The Convo. Evan, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Okay, and this is also called The Convo. It's not called The Dialogue. Okay. So that means that we want all your questions as well. So leave your questions in the comments and Social Pete will read them out later in the show. Um, say hi, Pete. Are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> hi, Pete. Hey, Pete. Hi, sorry. I'm That's... always on a delay. That's why. <laughs> Okay, well, well, Pete will be well, joining us with your questions later in the show. So, Chris, uh, why give in, uh, tablets to inmates? We'll actually show off one of the examples oh, sure. here. Yeah, let's see if we can get one yeah. sort of uh, boot up for a second. Well, th the first thing is that in the last 30 years or so, technology has changed every aspect of our society and our lives, and in most cases, it's changed it for the better. Sure. One of the exceptions, however, mm -hmm. are the 2.1 million people who are locked up in this country behind bars. Wow. So we built a digital moat around uh, about 2 million people. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's regrettable because technology can actually be a really important player mm -hmm. in their rehabilitation, their job training, mm -hmm. and their reentry into society. You're absolutely right. The vast majority of people who are locked up right now mm -hmm are people who will be released and be out on the streets with us. Right. You can think about it this way. Someone who was locked up eight, nine, ten years ago has never held a tablet in their hands. Mm -hmm. And that's not only something that a tool that could be used to help educate them and help them get ready for reentry. Mm -hmm. Increasingly, knowing about technology is a 21st century life skill, mm -hmm. something you need actually to know about in order to be successful in the workplace, for mm -hmm. instance. So there are lots of compelling reasons to finally bring technology behind bars. Okay, so now some of these tablets are actually in prisons right now. I think you said 22. We're in 20 locations across religions, the country yeah. now mm -hmm. will be in 25 by the end of the year wow. uh, across the country we're in San Francisco jails mm -hmm. we're here in New York City on Rikers Island mm -hmm. and many places in between in Kansas Indiana Texas Virginia across mm -hmm. the country how do any inmates who might be watching now on that tablet? <laughs> you know, we're going to yeah. probably try to find a way of making this video available yeah, yeah. so that people behind bars can actually see it. We would love to have it. Yeah. Um, so let's actually talk about maybe first the, yeah. uh, the tablet and the system we have in place. So sure. this is a Samsung uh, Tab S2. This That's is correct. a high-end sort of tablet. Yes. Came out last year. Um, well, let's, let's start with that. Why did you go with that? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. the, the first is that we wanted to make sure that we had a high-quality product. You can oh. source tablets in many different places. Mm -hmm. Samsung, with the exception of their recent issues with right. batteries, yeah. uh, has a reputation for manufacturing pretty decent tablets right. with high functionality. Um, as you can imagine, as perhaps we'll talk about in a mm -hmm. little bit anyway, I'll sort of bring back sure. that screen for a second, um, there are safety and security concerns. Mm -hmm. and. One of the things that's really important to us is to leverage mobile device management, mm -hmm. MDM. We work with AirWatch. Sure. AirWatch happens to play very nicely with something called Knox mm -hmm. uh, from Samsung, which was previously called Samsung for Enterprise Safe. Right, right. And uh, combining um, Samsung Safe slash Knox yeah. with a mobile device management and also by customizing a CSDK file mm -hmm. puts us in a place where we can really remotely control these devices and lock them down mm -hmm. so that all of the good things that we want inmates to be able to do right. on the internet and on their tablets are possible, mm -hmm. but none of the, the um, none of the things that we might not want them to do. Right, right. When you're in jail or prison, it's not the time to be on Facebook or Twitter. There are right. other things you ought to be doing with your time. Okay, so and then we'll talk about, yeah. um, now people might have noticed at home that this doesn't have the, 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 the typical uh, cover that you would have on your phone. This yeah. is like a super large, thick, about an inch thick uh, piece of like, kind of like hard rubbery plastic. Yes. Um, so tell us a little about the case and, and why that's there. I think maybe you know why. Well, yeah. sure. Um, yeah. I, and I think actually, you know, prison stuff is part of our zeitgeist, part of our culture, right. whether it's Orange is the New Black or all of the prison shows that you can see or sort of reality TV now. Yeah. One of the great concerns in a prison is physical safety. Right. Whether it's a paper clip or a tablet, whatever you bring in, you have to persuade the folks who run that institution, mm -hmm. the warden and the corrections officers, that the item that you're bringing in can't harm them. Right. So what we needed to do was to spec and build 
our own case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cases for consumers are designed to be opened and closed whenever you want. Right, this right. is not a case that you can open and close whenever you want. It needs special tools, and in fact, it's quite difficult even with special tools. Right. The important thing was um, not so much to protect the device, although it does a good job, and it is a rugged environment. You know, no carpets, lots of concrete. These mm -hmm. things get dropped. Right, right. Uh, the important thing is to make sure that no one can break the device and then remove something from it, whether it's a piece of the screen or something mm -hmm. else, and use that item to harm someone. Right, right, right. And so we're really gratified. We designed this case. We, um, it's custom built and manufactured. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really gratified that it's been used for more than 3.5 million man hours. Oh. And uh, no one has defeated the case yet. And the tablet or the case has not mm -hmm. ever been used to harm someone. So that's mm -hmm. an important first step. Right, right. Um, and uh, Facebook, I see you have a sure. question. Just to clarify something, what's the case made of? Because we have people saying, like, oh, is it made of glass? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, the case itself is actually a, um, a fairly complex and engineered thing. It's hard to tell, but the outside of it, it has a little bit of give and is sort of a rubbery type of plastic. Yeah. Um, and it, it sort of seamlessly fades into a harder plastic, which is inside. Mm -hmm. There's a Lucite sort of Lexon screen, mm -hmm. which is mounted. And then you'll see that there are metal pins that uh, secure it in each of these locations. And you need... Uh, special uh, special security grade tools in order to open that. Mm -hmm. uh, I should also say that after manufacturing it, we hired a, a third party, a company called NTS in Tinton Falls, New Jersey, mm -hmm. that does testing for the U.S. military. Mm -hmm. And we asked them to try to break it, basically. Okay. Um, and they came back and rated it actually as a U.S. military standard 10 8 810G ruggedized, which okay. uh, is a very specific term of art, mm -hmm. and talks about how it would survive, say, a six-foot drop on concrete or something along those lines. There, there's a screen over here. There is a Lexon if, screen. If you didn't see that, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and that's an important component. So let's talk about how it's um, it, how it works in the prisons. Sure. So the prisoners, they're actually given their own uh, tablet, and they're allowed to just like walk around the prison with it and bring it back to their cell? There or? are a variety of use cases, okay. and we tend to start sort of crawl, walk, run. Right. Um, the first use case, a very typical one mm -hmm. is uh, uh, many inmates are in classes of some kind, mm -hmm. whether it's a GED class or a rehabilitation class mm -hmm. of some sort. And so typically an institution will start by saying, you can use your tablets while you're in class so okay. that we can access some information. Right. Almost every classroom in the world now is becoming digitized, right? right? right. So there are lots of good resources. Mm -hmm. The next step after that is typically that inmates get to use them both during class and yeah. after class to do homework or to mm -hmm. do something called flip the classroom mm -hmm. so they can watch a video at night right. uh, that they discuss in class the next day rather than wasting class time watching the video. Sure. Um, and in some facilities, depending on the security level and, and what's going on, um, inmates have access to their tablets pretty much from 8 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. until, uh, until lights out, which okay. is 9 or 10. Um, typically, there is an idea that the tablet should be returned uh, during mealtime so that people can communicate with each right, other. Right, right. It's also a great opportunity to recharge the tablet if the battery needs it. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are a variety of use cases, mm -hmm. and I'd say the vast majority of them now, uh, folks have the tablets for at least four to six hours a day. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Facebook, I see you have a question. How is this uh, initiative funded? Um, is your company for profit? So uh, APDS is a public benefits corporation. From the point of view of the IRS and from shareholders, we're just a plain vanilla C-Corp. We're a profit-seeking enterprise. Mm -hmm. But when we incorporated in the state of Delaware, we identified that we wanted to be a public benefits corporation, which is a special kind of company that is allowed and, in fact, required to pursue both a public goal and a private goal. Mm -hmm. And so we have filing requirements um, in Delaware, and we're independently audited. And the point of this is that um, we want to do well and we want to do good. And what we really want to do is partner with folks in corrections. With regards to who pays for it, it's important to us that we develop a product that we can sell to correctional institutions, prisons, jails, paid for by the institutions, not the inmates. Mm -hmm. It's important to us that we make the argument that if you were to hypothetically invest $1,000 a year in a licensee to tablet, all of the support for an inmate to have one of these things, we need to show you that you're going to save three to $5,000 in taxpayer money in the first year as a result of using the technology. And we've all had this experience. Tech, one of the things that technology does is drive costs down. Sure. And there are lots of ways in which having technology in the prison actually lowers costs for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. um, there are some other models out there and folks who want to sell tablets to uh, inmates who can afford them, and, and many cannot, mm -hmm. or rent them to them. Uh, we think that's exploitative. Mm -hmm. And the primary purpose of our tablet is an education, rehabilitation, job training, and reentry um, purpose. Mm -hmm. So the um, 
our job is to use the tablet, use technology to deliver content that changes people's lives so that when they go out, they're successful. They don't reoffend, they don't come back. And that ultimately makes society safer and better, but also saves us tons and tons of money. Now, surely people at home are, yeah. are going to be asking questions about, like, um, how do you protect, there's the criminal element in mm -hmm. prison. How do you protect the public from that, especially because these are networked devices. They are. Uh, so they can get on Wi-Fi, they can get on, um, they're on the Verizon network, it looks like. They are. Yeah, so um, so what are the, the what, what are the safeties for the public when you have these sort of devices? So starting from the ground, up. The first thing is, though it is a Samsung S2 device, it is highly customized. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I can even sort of, um, when you turn one of these things on, mm -hmm. When you get to the homepage, you'll see that when you turn them on, you are not in a, in a normal consumer experience. This mm -hmm. is locked down in sort of a kiosk mode. Right. Um, and so what's going on? We, um, there's a custom CSDK file that we create in collaboration with Samsung that allows us to control many of the functions of the tablet that aren't ordinarily remotely controllable. Mm -hmm. We use AirWatch mobile device management, which allows us to turn the devices on and off, to brick them, mm -hmm. to GPS track them, to put them in geofences so mm -hmm. that we know where they are, um, and to really strictly control what applications are on. So there are mm -hmm. whitelisted and blacklisted websites, right. um, and all of those things need to be vetted for us before we, we put them on. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we're also really gratified that in the three and a half million man hours of use, no one has ever gotten to a website that they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the things that we're concerned about? We don't want anyone to be able to contact or harass a former victim, mm -hmm. to harass a former witness, right, right. to engage in continuing criminal activity, right. or to otherwise endanger the public or the safety of the institution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it's fun, it's nice to have a tablet, yeah. but the vast majority of the things that are here are educational or rehabilitation oriented. It, it, so it, it, it's not meant to be a pacifier, for instance. Sure. Uh, Facebook, yeah. you have a question? Sure. Yeah, we had a question related to supervising um, people who are using these. Um, is there any sort of logging or, are, I mean, are basically the prisoners allowed to just have these tablets off on their own, I'm, you I'm, know, I'm, privately? I'm really glad you asked the question. So the first thing is that um, every morning, um, it's sort of a typical use case, mm -hmm. prisoners, uh, inmates wake up, uh, they go, there's a charging cart, they sign their tablets out, so it's given to them, it's inspected by uh, the corrections officer to make sure that it's in, in good working order and it's a one-to-one -one assignment. The same inmate gets the same tablet every day. Um, and then they use it throughout the day. Um, and as I mentioned, the device is remotely supervised um, using AirWatch MDM. We also have a facility uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, through a company called Vox Mobile, mm -hmm. and they are um, a managed mobility enterprise mm -hmm. business. And 24-7, 365, as we're standing here right now, there is someone in Cleveland mm -hmm. looking at a big screen with, let's say, 100 green dots. And each one of those green dots represents a tablet hypothetically, on Rikers Island. And green means it's in compliance. We've talked to it recently. Mm -hmm. It has everything on it it's supposed to. It has nothing it's not supposed to. Um, and that green dot might turn to yellow, hypothetically. For instance, one of our um, alerts would be if the battery life of the tablet was less than 20%, okay. we actually want them to go take it back. And that would require, that would result in an action. Okay. Um, and then um, we have the devices, for instance, geofenced so that we know that all the 100 tablets that are on Rikers Island are supposed to stay on Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. If one of them ends up in Suffolk, mm -hmm. uh, we know and we're alerted and, yeah. we, and we can do something about it. I should also say that the devices have one other sort of piece of special sauce, which is an application that we've developed called Beacon, mm -hmm. which is on the device itself. And basically, if you drop the device once, no big deal. But if somebody's really trying to work it and open up the device in some way, mm -hmm. the device can yell out for help. Okay. It'll shut down, yeah. it'll alert someone, and then we'll actually send a message to a corrections office Mm -hmm. who will say, tablet number five, which belongs to Joey Smith, mm -hmm. uh, which we last saw in this GPS location, you should go get it because maybe Joey's doing something with the tablet that mm -hmm. he shouldn't be doing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually yeah. just uh, opened the browser here. It's actually, mm -hmm. and the thing actually works really fast. This is a nice tablet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, try to go to PCMag.com. <laughs> this website has been blocked by your IT administrator. Yes. So basically, I assume there's a very limited it, it set of websites you're allowed to go to as opposed to the several that you're not allowed to go to. Yes, yeah. and we want to be really... Um, <laughs> We, we, uh, there's actually some special sauce that I probably shouldn't talk about okay, publicly, yeah, yeah, yeah. but basically there are a couple of things you know, need to know about the connectivity. Uh -huh. The first thing is that the device only connects through 3G, 4G, LTE, mm -hmm. Verizon cellular data. So you don't do Wi-Fi? We completely disable Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for doing uh -huh. that. 
The first is that actually Wi-Fi um, is inherently less safe, and, okay. and, um, and other folks have had bad experiences with it. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is, uh, for example, we're in the jail in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. When we walked into that jail in downtown San Francisco, it was bathed in perfect sure. ambient yeah, signal, sure, sure. which we could use. Yeah. Um, which means we didn't have to put holes in walls, we didn't have to um, put access points or mm -hmm. routers or pull cable. Nobody likes holes in their walls. Mm -hmm. Jails and prisons really don't like them. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the other thing that's beautiful about it is that they connect to, um, through Verizon's network, to a, a private network, a CPN, right? Okay. So the moment they talk to the local cell tower, yeah. they're identified as being completely different and unique, mm -hmm. and the traffic is rooted um, without going over the public internet mm -hmm. to Terramark. Now, Terramark actually is a cloud hosting facility. There's a lot of stuff with the U.S. government. Yeah. Happens to be owned by Verizon. Mm -hmm. So in our partnership, it, from an engineering point of view, it's mm -hmm. terrific. And this is actually the, a, um, a solution that was previously developed and used extensively by the Department of Homeland S Security mm -hmm. and the New York City Anti-Terror Task Force. So it's one of our other sort of uh, security um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, provisions that we work only on cellular data, mm -hmm. only on a private network with Verizon and Terramark. Uh, Facebook, I see you have a question. What are some of the apps that are preloaded on here? Uh, oh, well, we can show some of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of my personal favorites is Brain Pop on that one. Yeah, or Brain Pop's here. Okay, so. Um, uh, there are educational apps like Brain Pop, which happens to be one of my personal favorites. Mm -hmm. I think this will take a second to. Uh, and, and your company has a, um, a, a relationship with them because this is usually a pay per month service or pay per year. It is. Yeah. The, the primary purpose of our tablets mm -hmm. um, is to um, uh, provide an individualized education, rehabilitation, mm -hmm. job training, and reentry plan. Mm -hmm. And so the vast majority of the websites that we whitelist and allow access mm -hmm. to are educational. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we use Khan Academy. We are the exclusive distributor of TED Talks in the correctional oh, space. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also like some of the educational apps like Brain Pop. Mm -hmm. And then there are well, Maybe PC Mag at a future date. Maybe. You know, yeah. absolutely open yeah, yeah. to discussion. And one of the things um, that uh, we also do, uh -huh. I'm not any good at dots, um, but to the extent that there are things like games um, that we make available, uh -huh. we try to make them um, things that are engaging, and they're made. They're typically provided as a reward for achieving an academic goal. Okay. So if we wanted to help you study for the GED, mm -hmm. you take a couple of lessons. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, you might get access to play a game, and increase. You might get all the way up to uh, not Subway Surfer. Camille, you're going to help me. What it, it's um, Temple Run. Run. I love yes. Temple Run. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we provide access to that as well as movies and music, mm -hmm. um, but exclusively in the context of rewarding good behavior yeah. and academic achievement. Um, so those okay. kinds of things. Yeah. So now each inmate gets their own tablet that they always have access to. So if Social Pete um, murders everybody and then goes to jail, yes. so Social Pete, would this would always be Social Pete's tablet. It would always be Social Pete's tablet okay. while he is there. Yeah, yeah. Although when Social Pete leaves and is replaced by not so Social Eleven, right. um, <laughs> Uh, you might, we will, we will flash the device to make sure that there's no uh, information that belongs to Social Pete on it, and then it'll be recycled and used for you. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of reasons why it's important to make an individual responsible. Yeah. Um, if I have the same tablet every day, I'm going to take care of it if it has things on it that right. I like and that I care about. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is you may have noticed that the case itself is transparent. Yeah. That's so that it can be inspected. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things people are concerned about is contraband being hidden. Right. right? right. So in, in, it hasn't happened, but if it were to happen that there was mm -hmm. contraband in here, well, this is Social Pete's tablet. There's right. no question as to who's responsible for the contraband, Social Pete. Right. Um, and so uh, we, we like the sort of one-to-one um, -one relationship. Yeah. Now, they're, they're not, they don't have access to social networks, but yeah. like, um, is there a way that they could get a special form of Skype or something like that so they could keep in touch with family members, which is something that's beneficial for the inmates? And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of the evidence suggests mm. that the more frequently an mm. inmate is in communication with someone on the outside who loves them, right. a wife, a mother, a father, brother, sister. It's easier to do it, yeah. The better behaved they are when they're incarcerated, right. and the more likely they are to be successful when they're released. Yeah. So we actually should be very interested in facilitating communication, at least with good people, right? right, right? right. Not their former gang associates, right, right. but... 
Um, and yes, at the moment there's a messaging platform. Mm -hmm. The messaging platform is predominantly used right now to communicate between inmates and trusted players in the institution. Okay. The nurse, the teacher, the warden, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it is used to facilitate electronic communication between inmates and their friends so and family. So that would be, but not, not like um, video or, or photos. It Much more text. at the moment, like, yeah. like text or, or email-like with yeah. some filtering and some intermediation. Right. In the very new, near future, mm -hmm. we will release a video visitation and voice over IP okay. solution. Yeah. And one of our goals there is also to make this um, mo new mode of communication not only available, but mm -hmm. very, very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Up until now, inmates and their families have really been exploited by traditional telephone companies. Uh -huh. And we want to, by orders of magnitude, lower the cost of mm -hmm. communication because it is so good for them right. and it's good for their families. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, so you have a question. What role do you think this is going to play in reducing overall mass incarceration? Well, I hope it plays a pretty important role. Um, the big picture is that one out of every 31 Americans right now is under correctional control. That's wow. 2.1 or 2.2 million behind bars, another 5 million on parole or probation. Mm -hmm. Unquestionably, that's expensive. It's at least $85 billion a year mm -hmm. in annual costs. And unfortunately, it doesn't work very well. It doesn't make our society much safer. Um, and about 43% of the 800,000 people who will be released this year from prison or jail, 43% of them will be back in prison or jail mm -hmm. within three years. That's oh. the recidivism rate. So um, that means we're not doing a really good job yet of mm -hmm. changing people's lives when they're behind bars. Mm -hmm. The promise of education, and uh, there's a recent RAND study report that um, summarizes this and proves that when you do prison education and do it well, mm -hmm. it dramatically lowers recidivism, and every dollar the state or the government invests in educating incarcerated people saves the state at least $5 within three years wow. why, and lowers recidivism. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm listen, there are some folks who are locked up, Charles Manson, He's in jail, he's in prison rather, he's going to be there forever and nobody wants him out because no one has any idea how to change his life, right? right. Most of the people in prison are not Charles Manson. Right. Most of them are people who will be released and who just need some more skills and, um, and more information, more knowledge, mm -hmm. so that when they are released, they make better decisions mm -hmm. and um, don't threaten public safety and don't cost the taxpayer more money. Um, I don't think it's too presumptuous to say that within the prison population, there's um, a lot of people who came from impoverished backgrounds. Yes. A lot of people who have probably never seen a tablet before, or at least gotten their chance to, to use one. Is there any talk about perhaps even giving them the tablet on their way out of prison or any kind of program for that? It's a great question, um, and the short answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting mixed bag in terms mm -hmm. of folks who are incarcerated, and there's a weird story about technology and lower socioeconomic mm -hmm. status. So, for instance, some of the first earliest adapters mm -hmm. um, of technology are young folks who are socioeconomically disadvantaged. Right, right. Their cell phone is their identity. It's their home, yeah. right? And, and you, don't, you don't need an expensive desktop or laptop computer because you can do a lot of stuff through a, a pretty reasonable price phone. Exactly. Yeah. And to the extent that you're sort of transient and don't have a home, that's it's sort of your identity. Sure. And one of the saddest things I've ever witnessed, yeah. actually, was a young man giving up his freedom for a couple of years in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, and his brother was with him. And his brother said, don't forget to call mom, call me, write us. Yeah young man handed over his cell phone and realized that he did not know the mailing address wow. of his mother or his brother. All he'd ever done was tweet or, yeah. or, or, or message. So um, there's that. And then there are lots of folks behind bars who have never seen or have never used this technology. Mm -hmm. And that's really regrettable because actually using technology like this mm -hmm. is a 21st century life skill sure. and increasingly a requirement for work. Mm -hmm. I have a list I keep in my wallet of the jobs that you can't do yeah. if you don't know how to navigate a tablet. Right, right. You, um, you can't even um, stock the shelves in a, in, a, in a grocery store. You can't work for FedEx. There are mm -hmm. many, many types of jobs that require so um, with the, uh, I think that simply familiarizing people behind bars mm -hmm. with technology, which of course changes over time too, mm -hmm. is a really important part of, of why mm -hmm. these tablet programs are, are going to be successful and make a difference. Uh, why tablets, not, not laptops? Um, well, the primary use case for the device mm -hmm. is an education use, use mm -hmm. case. And we found that we were able to accomplish with a good, high quality, decently sized tablet, many of the education goals that we wanted to mm -hmm. achieve. Um, there, um, the it's also sort of a uniquely favorable form factor for use in corrections. Mm -hmm. You don't want a mouse with a wire and a keyboard, right, things right, right. to get lost, to be broken, to be exploited. 
in um, many circumstances, we do additionally, if there are 400 inmates and they each have their own tablet, there may be a computer lab with Chromebooks mm -hmm. of 20 books. Because some of the work, this is great for doing yes, no questions, mm -hmm. but if you want to create a resume, you need a keyboard, and so we make that available in another environment. Can this replace the uh, prison library? It absolutely can yeah. and does. Um, and in fact, one of the ways that we save money in the institutions mm -hmm. um, is, ju is through just that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Trying to find one where it might already be loaded up mm -hmm. and save us a little bit of time. Um, well, well, tell us what yeah. you're looking for. So yeah. uh, what we do is we replace the recreational reading libraries. So this is loading here a second. Uh -huh. we, the paper-based uh, recreational reading libraries that are imprisoned with something more like a Kindle style. So it's mm -hmm. NCL, the National Corrections Library. It's a service of APDS. Mm -hmm. And folks can uh, download books. Um, it's a much larger collection. It's safer for the institution in a variety of ways mm -hmm. um, uh, because you can't ha hide a razor blade in a digital book. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's also better in terms of the overall size of the collection. Mm -hmm. Let me see if we can um, maybe get back here and show some titles. Yeah. Um, it, the overall size of the collection and the availability of titles in foreign languages. Mm -hmm. It allows us to look at the reading level of folks um, and even to scaffold reading mm -hmm. with audiobooks um, okay. so that we're actually really driving literacy. Um, so I would just like to point out that Twilight is number, <laughs> currently number two in most popular in the service. Oh, it, it's yeah. interesting. For a while, it was the story of Def Jam Records. Okay. Um, but I have to say that Twilight did really well uh -huh. and Fault in Our Stars, interesting. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, these, for, um, uh, these aren't just for male prisons, they're for female prisons too. For sure. It be young women who, you know. And we curate yeah. different collections. Okay. Um, there are collections that are curated for adults, for mm -hmm. young adults, and for juveniles. Mm -hmm. um, and though it's very much like a consumer experience, there are, so Locksmithing for Dummies is not yeah, one yeah. of the sure, books sure. On, the, on the list, mm -hmm. but a lot of other good stuff is. Um, now, do you guys, and you guys pay, because Twilight, I mean, that's still a active, being bought titles, so you guys have to pay the publisher? Absolutely. Okay. This is um, our partner for uh, National Corrections Library okay. is a company called Overdrive. Okay. Overdrive provides digital library collections for more than 77,000 public libraries in the country. Okay. And it's very much that much. So by the way, if you download uh, Twilight, yeah. you can only read it for 14 days before you have to return it. Okay. Right? Okay. So it's, a, it's, it's sort of a lending right, road. Right, right, right. Um, but we thought it was very important to build a first class library mm -hmm. of this kind. Um, and we're seeing this is one of the most engaged, and this is incredibly mm -hmm. um, gratifying that what folks are doing is um, is reading, mm -hmm. um, and 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 a lot of them are sort of self help books. Yeah. Um, I, for a while, one of the most successful books was the Seven ha Habits of Highly Effective CEOs. Okay. Okay. Right. And people are are looking to improve themselves yeah. through reading. Uh, this is mm -hmm. great. And now, so what do you guys have planned for like the next few years for the company? Well, we spoke in just a little while ago that yeah. one of our big initiatives is putting voice over IP and mm -hmm. video visitation in a safe and affordable way on the tablet because mm -hmm. it, it supports um, uh, successful reentry and helps build and strengthen important relationships. Yeah. So that's a major initiative going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, this is product version 2.0. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, product version 3.0 coming down the road, which we're really excited about. Um, a lot of the improvements to that will be about this unifying our learning management system. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea is that when someone gets a tablet, we want them to step through a bunch of assessments so mm -hmm. that we can learn what they're good at and what they maybe need to work on. Mm -hmm. And then we can create an individualized learning plan for them and then sort of take them through. So a lot of, of the work that we're doing in the future is about making that user experience a little bit more friendly mm -hmm. um, and also giving more concrete, immediate rewards. Mm -hmm. You just did a lesson for an hour. Tonight, you get to watch a movie. Sure, that kind of sure. thing. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, this has been great, hopeful, great stuff that you guys are doing. Um, really, and thank you for doing it. And thank you for joining us on the show. Chris, it's been, been amazing. It's been a great pleasure. Yeah. And thank you very much for your interest in the subject. Um, thank you to everyone at home who participated. Thank you to Social Pete. And as always, be good to each other. Peace.